welcome to Saddlebow Road, Kings Lynn, where around £10,000 has been spent to get the track in order for this one meeting. And really, it's a pretty wise investment because this is the UK qualifying round of the World Team Cup. England, the United States, Australia and New Zealand battling it out for just two qualifying places in the Intercontinental Final. Well, England went out of the competition at this stage last year. This is the selection they picked to save our pride this time. Of course, Michael Lee and Dave Jessup riding on their home track. Peter Collins and Chris Morton of Bellevue, and the captain John Louis at reserve, which is a pretty important tactical position for England. But the biggest challenge, surely, is going to come from the United States. They lead England 2-1 in the current Test Series, and riders like Scott Autry and Bruce Pennell really going well at the moment. New Zealand, the reigning World Team Cup holders, will be relying very heavily on the form of Ivan Major, but they've also got a lineup that can get them through. Perhaps the weakest challenge, though, coming from Australia, but their number one, Billy Sanders, is a man who really goes well at Saddlebow Road. So that's the challenge facing England. Two to go through to the Intercontinental Final. Let's join commentator Dave Lanning. Coming up for Heat 1, then, of the 1980 UK round of the World Team Cup between the four best in the West nations, indeed, England, New Zealand, the holders, America and Australia. And in Heat 1, we have a couple of riders of particular interest to East Anglian fans here. The first uh, major world meeting ever staged at Saddlebow Road, Kings Lynn. This is Billy Sanders from Ipswich, just down the way. Billy, of course, the Australasian champion and spearheading the Australian attack. The Aussies in a little bit of trouble here because they've already lost John Titman from their four-man squad. Remember, it's a rider, an individual rider from each country in each race. And here is the English rider, another uh, hometown favourite, Kings Lynn star, Michael Lee. Heat number one coming up. Let's have a look at the lineup on the inside there. It is Dennis Segalos from the USA. Next to him in blue, Billy Sanders. In grid three, in the red helmet colour, we have there Bruce Cribb. And on the outside, Michael Lee from England. So heat one of the UK round of the World Team Cup. An absolutely beautiful sunshine here at Kings Lynn. Heat number one. but it's Lee from the outside and Segalos from the inside to get to the corner first. Segalos leads it from America going through on the inside of Michael Lee into second place. It is Billy Sanders but Lee is fighting him off. The Americans fast starters and real nudge there from Sanders off Lee around ran that third corner. And it's now Segalos still leading in second place going through there. Returning the compliment is Michael Lee and Lee and Sanders are having a terrific battle for second place. In the meantime, Segalos from America first out of the start and roaring past him on his back wheel under our commentary position. Dennis Segalos from the Hull Vikings. The Americans, well, they qualified last year in the rain at Reading, we remember, with New Zealand. A bit of a surprise that was in this round. And it looks like they really mean to emulate that this time the last lap, 340 metres around this Kings Lynn circuit. America lead it through Sigala. Second place now, Michael Lee has established that for himself. Third place is Billy Sanders and Lee still closing on Sigala. It's a bit too late though. Three points then for Dennis Sigalos from the United States. He was the rider in the white helmet colour. Two points for England, Michael Lee. One for Australia. No score for New Zealand, the holders of the World Cup. And let's now look across the line for Heat 2. On the inside there, in the blue helmet, Connor Mick McKeon from Australia. In red in grid 2, New Zealand's Larry Ross, five times the New Zealand champion. Grid 3 in white will be Bobby Schwartz, this very explosive, colourful American riding now with the Reading Racers. And on the outside, Peter Collins, England's, uh, of course, last world champion in 1976. PC, wearing yellow and black. And we make it that Collins should be in grid three. In fact, that's the way it should be. So it's Schwartz on the outside and Collins in grid three. Collins it was, surprisingly, who made the start. Peter Collins leads. Heat number two in second place. It is the rider in blue. That's Mick McKee in third place, just moving up on the outside. We have Bobby Schwartz from the USA. But Collins leads it for England. And McKean's in all kind of trouble. And that's Larry Ross. Now Schwartz diving under uh, McKeon there. You can see the action really beginning to build up now. Collins though made a pitcher start for PC. Not renowned as a great starter, but he's leading heat number two. And uh, Schwartz did terrible trouble there. Well, Schwartz picked up the back wheel of Mick McKeon. He managed to get off, but uh, my word, that was a nasty looking one. 
look what happened there on that top corner. You can see McKeon. It's right at the back there. Bobby Schwartz makes the big dive to try and go under him. And they all lock up there, and Schwartz picks up the back wheel. There's McKeon maintaining control. We've lost sight of Schwartz. There he goes into the fence very, very hard indeed. And he's picked himself up. He's OK, really. He must be made of whipcord. Well, there is Bobby Schwartz, and, uh, well, that was a nasty-looking accident. It's nice to see him on his feet, but he looks uh, really as though he's annoyed with himself for making such a mistake. So it's McKeon on the inside. Then we have Larry Ross from New Zealand and Wimbledon Don. He's in the red helmet colour grid two. Peter Collins in grid three in the yellow and black helmet colour. Three starters only, the rerun of heat two. made the jumper though, uh, Larry Ross indeed got a good line up to the first corner, Ross leads it for New Zealand, second place is Collins diving down through the inside there really bombing Ross, tremendous piece of action from Peter Collins, really looking sharp here at Kingston, McKeon goes right over the top corner but it's Peter Collins showing the sort of style that uh, we've come to expect from this spectacular gentleman from Lyman Cheshire, Bellevue Ace of course and uh, well he missed the start that time but he was still very determined to get his nose in front England of course still smarting from their dismissal from this tournament at this particular stage last year that was down at Reading in the rain while well, we've got Kings Lynn in absolutely blazing sunshine that seems to suit the lines much better and there's a packed English audience here. Peter Collins in full flow, always an exciting spectacle. He's going to win heat two. Second place is Ross, and we've got Mick McQueen just creeping home with engine fed. It is uh, Peter Collins, number 13. Not so unlucky for him that time. Well, there's a the scoring after three heats of this 1980 UK final of the World Team Cup. Perhaps the interesting factor is there that uh, New Zealand, the holders, are back in last place on two points and beginning to lose touch with the overall leaders, England and the United States. So to cross the line on the inside there in blue from Sydney, Australia, now with Birmingham in the British League, it is Phil Hearn in grid two major, canny old starter. Grid three has England's Dave Morton, and he's a spectacular little thrill merchant when he gets going from Bellevue. He's in yellow and black, and on the outside, having a bit of bother with his mach machinery there, no question, Scott Autry. So a bit of a prestige here in eight four. And despite all the trouble, it's from the outside, Autry, and from the inside, it is Phil Hearn, and Major's at the back. He made a tremendous start and coming through in second place now it's Chris Morton for England and Morton loves to drive around the boards. Oh, now third place is Hearn and Majors at the back and look at old Chris Morton go. Oh, that was beautiful cornering. Chris Morton from Bellevue, Manchester. He's a really He loves to screw the front one, renowned for his outside dashes transfer this from Bellevue during the winter and uh, he went off to the Middle East and won the Middle East Masters crown and he really has continued in that sort of winning vein since he's uh, was brought into the England squad by the new managers Ian Thomas and Eric Bucock more or less as an oversight uh, against the Americans he's been led in by injuries but he really has justified his place look at Morton with heat number four for England second place America third place were Australia, that was Phil Hearn and Ivan Major, the world champion, is for it last. Well, let's watch Chris Morton here because it's a really typical piece of action from him. He loves to get out in the dirt on the outside. Autry seems calm and composed on the inside, but watch Chris Morton in the striped helmet, yellow and black, hit the corner, he keeps the throttle open, and he goes round Autry here in his final piece of overtaking, as you're likely to see at any speedway track in the world. Really, a pitcher manoeuvre from Chris Morton. We've had five heats, and as you can see, a clear-cut battle developing between the USA and England for the crown. They're well clear of the Anzacs. New Zealand back on two still, Australia on five. Across the grid, then, on the inside, in red, we have Larry Ross from New Zealand. Next to him, it will be Scott Autry from America. Grid three, the fast-starting Dave Jessup from England and Kingsland, local lad in grid three in yellow and black. And on the outside, Billy Sanders from Ipswich and Australia in blue. So this one should really be a pretty even battle because these are all very, very accomplished performers. Heat number six. And it's from the inside and Jessup.
Jessup leads it from bit three. He's on the outside in red there. It's Larry Ross and Autry comes through the inside of Ross and almost took his left foot off. Jessup, what a great first quarter that was from Dave Jessup. He's leading. Second place is all is the uh, New Zealander Larry Ross and at the back Billy Sanders from Australia but Dave Jessup well that really was some stirring action in the first corner and uh, it's going to take a fast man to catch him around his own heat Jessup going away looking back this is a bit more like it for England of course the Lions dominated this tournament winning it three times in five years in the mid 1970s uh, they had a disaster in Germany in 1978 the title to Denmark and of course they were eliminated last year at this stage at Reading but uh, they look like they really mean to qualify and put the record straight this year. Going to be just above the line for the most uh, cool, calm, well collected three points. Second place America, third place Larry Ross from New Zealand so still it's the same old story England and America really getting a stranglehold on this tournament. Let's just watch Dave Jess. We've got his head tilted over there you can see looking at the outside part of the starting gate away they go here and Jessup doesn't really make a very very quick break but up to that first corner he just inclines his body over there you can see Larry Ross is on his inside but he's got his line absolutely right he's a little man he's got all the throttle on Ross trying to contain him they just watch the way Autry back in third place spots his opportunity as Larry Ross there in second place in the red helmet he just pulls a bit of a slide there and Autry spots that gap and flies through there really through the eye of a needle and almost takes Larry Ross's left uh, leg off as he goes through Welcome back to Kings Lynn, where this World Team Cup qualifier is turning into a bit of a two-horse race between England and the United States. England lead at the moment, but the United States surely won't be settling for second best. Let's rejoin commentator Dave Lanning. Heat number seven coming your way, and Peter Collins, who uh, looked to have recaptured all his old sharpness in his earlier ride, which he won. He's on the inside here, and he faces uh, right next to him, in fact, on the grid in the white helmet color, Dennis Sigalos from the United States, who indeed won his first race in very fine style. So those perhaps are the two to watch. England and America are well clear on the points at the moment there. England two up on 15, uh, America on 13. So really the real battle here is all about who's going to win the UK title. Let's have a look at the lineup then. Uh, Collins on the inside in yellow, yellow and black. Next to him in white, we have Dennis Tagalos. Phil Hearn is the Australian in the blue helmet colour in grid three. And on the outside, Mitch Shearer in red for New Zealand. Heat number seven, perhaps the inside grid, the one to watch for at the start. start but it is Collins who breaks and second place is Sigalos trying the outside of Peter Collins. Collins knows he's there, swings over so again it's England, America. Down goes, uh, wow, down goes, uh, who was that? That was Phil Hearn and it was Mitch Shearer who went first and Phil Hearn just couldn't get out of the way. The bike ran along with him, Phil Hearn seemed to be an awful long try trying to get off. He must have gone some 20 yards, there's Mitch Shearer, Mitch Shearer dropped and his bike took Phil Hearn into the fence with an almighty thump. Let's just see what does happen there, if we can, you can see this is the second corner, Collins and Sigalos are well away. Now this, watch the pair at the back here, Mitch Shearer, there's the lead up front, that's Collins and that is Sigalos behind him. And they're just a bit out of our picture at the moment. All the action is at the back. Collins unaware of the drama going on behind him. And there goes Phil Hearn, and he goes into the fence with an awful bang. You can see Mitch Shearer's bike went with him. That was caused all the trouble. And that shouldn't have happened. They have an ignition cut out, and the bike shouldn't have kept going. But that's no consolation to poor old Phil Hearn. The risks all too attendant at Speedway. We can see Phil Hearn being carried off there. And it doesn't look at all good. It really is. A sad moment, he hit the fence with a real bang. And we'll bring you some news on Phil Hearn just as soon as we get a clear indication of the extent of his injuries. The restart of Heat 7, the good news from the ambulance room is that Phil Hearn, badly shaken, maybe a bit of concussion, but nothing uh, more serious, we hope, anyway. The restart, well, uh, of course, he's not fit for that, so his place is taken by the Australian reserve, Gary Gugliemi. He'll ride in blue here. 
from Boston near the National League just down the road. So the revised lineup on the inside, Peter Collins in yellow and black. Next to him, Dennis Tagalos and the reserve, Gary Gugimi in blue. Three starters only, 87 for the second time of the Sigalos, it is definitely who gets away for America. He leads it. Second place now, Gugliem. He's riding a brave race here. And so too is Peter Collins, who really blocks him out there. And now Peter Collins going after Sigalos. Sigalos riding a beautiful line for America. As they roar past our commentary position, Gugliemi for Australia is having a rare double at Peter Collins. PC certainly knows this young man from Sydney's there. Sigalos taking advantage uh, of uh, the distraction caused by Gugliemi to Collins. Gugliemi is riding very beautifully, this uh, American. He won his first race, and uh, Peter Collins is having to really stretch to try and keep pace with him. If I get up in class. Collins coming up on the inside, there is an arm back. his front wheel just pouring the ground there. He's got Peter Collins, a real tiger on his tail. Collins again stretching now. Peter Collins must make his big effort here. The last two quarters of beat number seven. And Sigalos has just drifted a little bit wide. And Collins has sneaked through. And they go across the line together. And I would have said Sigalos held on. But there could only have been a tyre width in it. Well, let's just watch that uh, thrilling finish again. You can see Dennis Sigalos. He's in the white helmet. Now, he just drifts out here and leaves enough uh, room for Peter Collins to make his run. His front wheel almost off the ground here, Peter Collins. Here they come to the line. Sigalos on the outside. Collins seeming to have more drive, but then Sigalos again picks it up and over the line. No question, Sigalos wins heat number seven. Midway through this UK round of the World Team Cup sponsored by Gauntlet. And uh, you can see the Union Jack at the moment uh, blowing very, very, in the breeze the score is England on 20 America their nearest challengers four points behind on 16 and really it is a two horse race New Zealand back on five the holders have been desperately disappointing here well the New Zealanders here have definitely pulled in a reserve in each number nine in place of Bruce Cribb in red it's Wayne Brown there young reserve let's look at the revised lineup then on the inside on the inside in the blue helmet colour is Danny Kennedy. Then in grid number two in red, we have Wayne Brown. We're sure of that, although we haven't been officially notified. Grid three has Scott Autry in white, and on the outside in yellow and black, it is Peter Collins from England. So here we go for Hick Knight. Autry made a tremendous start there. Peter Collins is back in last place. Kennedy and Brown and Collins is going squeezing past the pair of them on the inside again. A perfect piece of maneuverability for Peter Collins. And now he's chasing hard after Autry. So Autry leads it. Collins is second. Kennedy is third. And again, we're going to be sure to have some spectacular speed reaction from Peter Collins. He hates being beaten. And he'll make Scott Autry go every inch of the way. He's going through on the inside. on him, left him no room, Collins goes wide, Autry's still in command, they're coming around the last two corners of lap number three, again Collins will swing out, now he'll swing back to try and find a line through on the inside, and I think he's going to do it this time, he's gone through there again, superb speedway from Peter Collins, Autry's locking back under him, and why well, we've got a race and a half, and they're absolutely together down into the last two corners, Autry on the inside, Collins on the outside, Autry's thrown him very, very for America, two for England, one there for Australia, and again, a real firecracker of a speedway race, tremendous. And just to make sure, Scott Autry's doing an extra lap. Let's just look at that last lap again. Autry in the white helmet. Collins has gone powering through on the inside. He's got his front wheel over the white line. And he's just run by the corner. Autry knew where he was going. Switched back beautifully. Together down the back straight. Autry now on the inside. Collins on the outside. It really is a perfect piece of speedway action, this. Now then, there's Autry on the inside. They're locked together, almost touching there. You can see now Autry will just move out and give him a bit of a nudge over there. Move over, Peter. And uh, Dan levelling up, getting the wheels back in line. And that was the deciding moment at a really super speedway race. Nine races gone, and the Americans have pulled back one of those points on England there. You can see the progressive totals as we move into heat number 10. 16, remember, in this uh, UK round of the World Team Cup. And the Americans now parade their unbeaten uh, superstar, the pin-up boy himself, 
Bruce Pennell hasn't been beaten in his first two starts. And this time he's in against Michael Lee, the uh, whiz kid, the local lad here from Kings Lynn Stars. Heat number 10 then, it's going to be Michael Lee on the inside in yellow. Next to him in blue, we have the Australian reserve for Phil Hearn, Gary Gugliemi. In white in grid three, it's Bruce Pennell, unbeaten thus far. And on the outside in red, Larry Ross, who's got a second and a third, so he's been the most consistent of the New Zealanders. Heat 10. Jet propelled starts, Pennell leads it, Lee is second, going around the outside of Michael Lee, it's Larry Ross at the back, it's Gugliemi, but again, Pennell in command of Heat 10, and what can Michael Lee do with his home crowd behind him? Well, he's going to try and switch back as Pennell just overcooked that second corner, just couldn't find the drive, and we've got another compelling duel out there in the sun. Uh, home straight under our commentary position with his front wheel in the air. He really has got to pull out all the stops. Michael Lee right on his back wheel waiting for one slip and he'll be through. There is the last lap, 340 metres remember. And again pedal seems to get into a bit of trouble on that second corner. Now here comes Michael Lee under him so very hard and they absolutely locked together. said he put his neck on the line there Michael Lee drove through there as though he was on a bulldozer and there we can see both of them shaking hands uh, Pennell always the great sportsman but he must have wondered what hit him there on the lap uh, for the last corner there Michael Lee came under him like a man inspired and the crowd here at Saddlebow Road while well, you just listen to them Pennell on the outside Michael Lee as they go down the straight now just watch him go he just says I'm coming through there, it's awfully close, just look how close they are, remember they're doing something like 60 mile an hour, going sideways on, Pennell's trying to contain him, look at the wheels bouncing around, they're off the ground, there's the front wheel of Michael Lee, and Lee really has ridden the race of his life there, that was absolutely tremendous overtaking, Michael Lee snatching the points right on the line. A look across the line then in heat 11, on the inside in blue we have Billy Sanders from Australia, next to him in white the unlucky Bobby Schwartz from America, he's in grid 2, grid 3 has Mitch Shearer almost equally unlucky, no points yet, and on the outside Chris Morton with 5 points for England, a win in the second place, heat 11, England 4 points up on America, the Anzacs nowhere in sight. It's Sanders who leads it, and Morton does the big dive around the outside and came from last to first on the first two corners. And we are getting some fabulous action here at Kings Lynn. Chris Morton leads it. Billy Sanders, third place in now, trying to find a hole through the inside is Bobby Schwartz for America. But again, we had a first and second corner really to marvel about. now seems to be settled around second place with uh, Sanders under a fair amount of proper attention from Bobby Schwartz on the inside. Morton then, after that uh, really daredevil first and second corners when he came from nowhere, last to first, and he's going to win heat 11, and the line is really boring here at Kings Lynn. Tremendous action from Chris Morton over the line. Second place is Sanders from Australia. Third place, the brave Bobby Schwartz. But England now really beginning to impose their will on this UK round of the World Team Cup. Well, the rider to watch here is on the outside in the yellow and black helmet, Chris Morton. You can see at the start here, he is by no means first away. In fact, he's not far off being last away as the rest of them go into the corner. Morton definitely last there. Now, just watch him around the outside now. He's gone around three of them in one beautiful swoop. And that really is as fine a piece of overtaking from last to first in one corner. Four races left. There's the score chart. That means that uh, England and America, whatever happens, have qualified for the intercontinental round of the World Team Cup. That's in Denmark early in July. Heat number 13, we have Chris Morton, who we've really seen in some... Uh, 
memorable action in his earlier rides. His last ride when he went around the field on the first corner will live with us for a long while. Let's see what he can make of heat 13. All the con competitors here having their last ride in the competition. This is on the inside Chris Morton. He has eight points so far. Then in grid two, we have Danny Kennedy from Australia, three points so far. Grid three, Larry Ross has four points, hasn't won a race yet. And on the outside in white, Dennis Segalos, who has eight points thus far. So heat 13, Dennis Segalos, of course, from the United States. Heat 13. First corner, but Morton it is who emerges from the ruck. He leads in second place to Gars. Absolutely screwing it all. We saw his throttle had just screwed the throttle there, and he went past Morton as though he was stood still. That takes a bit of doing. So Sigalos going for his life with Morton after him. Third place, if it matters, is the rider in red, and that's Larry Ross. But it's England and America, and we have another fantastic jewel in the sun. And Morton again. You've got to doff your cap to him. He went around the outside of as sweet as you're likely to see. Who on earth said Speedway's all about the first man out of the gate? Going to the last lap now, and again, Chris Morton has produced the goods for this capacity crowd at Saddlebow Road, Kings Lynn. He was passed on the first lap. He has screwed on the throttle and went around the outside, high, wide, and very handsome indeed for three points. Morton wins it for England. Second place was Sigalos for America. In third place, a long way back, Larry Ross from New Zealand. But again, a race that will live with us for many a moon. Well, the crowd here at Saddlebow Road is a big one too. Enjoying the sunshine and certainly enjoying England, who really have regained their pride here this afternoon. Well, we're moving now into heat 14, and Dave Jessup, the little man in yellow and black, could wrap it up for England here because the Lions need now only really to stay on to make sure of winning this UK round. Let's have a look at the lineup for heat 14 on the inside there in red, Bruce Crimp, no score so far. Australian uh, reserve Gary Goose leading the use of the blue helmet on the outside. Dave Jessup's in grid two, Bobby Schwartz from America in white in grid three. So heat 14, let's watch Dave Jessup who could absolutely anchor an England success and first place in this UK round here in heat number 40. Jessup it is around the first corner, Schwartz is second and third place. The battle is between uh, Goose Leamy and Crib and Crib has just pulled a locker there. So it's England, Dave Jessup, America, Bobby Schwartz, Australia, Goose Leamy. And now, surely, it's all over by the shouting. Jessup already has built up a lead of some 30 lengths on Bobby Schwartz. Dave Jessup, of course, has only been beaten once. Here joined the stars who, of course, race at Saddlebow Road every Saturday night. Joined them from Reading, beginning of last season for a world record transfer fee, former schoolboy star, and really has anchored England in the most important fashion here this afternoon. Though he's lost his helmet colour there by the fence. And now the crowd surely will lift Dave Jessup around these last two corners, anchoring success, qualification, and back on top of the heap, England Lions. a second and Bruce Cripp just got up there in for third place for New Zealand but nobody's really making those sort of calculations at the tail end it's England's day Dave Jessup's win and the Lions really are back roaring in world speedway the last heat of the 1980 UK final of the World Team Cup and England really a convincing performance their four riders haven't had a third place yet so let's see if they can maintain that record of heat 16 their man here in yellow is Peter Collins in grid two Ivan Major on the inside next to him Collins but he's and Chris Green on the outside of Bruce Pennell from America in the white helmet cover. And Collins made a tremendous start on his back wheel and Autry is right out on the, uh, rather pedal out on the dirt. And in fact it's Sanders that has gone past uh, Collins from Australia around the outside. So, uh, wow. Well, uh, having uh, some thrilling speedway action. So it's Sanders who leads it, and the Aussies haven't had a race winner yet. And it looks like Billy Sanders wants to do something about that. Peter Collins is second, Bruce Pennell is third. And I don't think they're going to 
catch him now, and it looked as though it was all over for Peter Collins, who made a great start to heat number 16. So he just go to sleep a little bit and allow Billy Sanders to come from nowhere, although Collins again is challenging hard as they move into the last lap. Sanders, Collins, pedal still in touch. Collins going through on the inside. Sanders is holding him. Pedal is up in touch as well. What a finish we're having. Round the outside comes Pedal. Collins through on the inside. And over the line it was Sanders and Collins second. And Pedal third by my count. And you could have thrown a lady's handkerchief over all three as they went over the line. What a finish. An afternoon of memorable speedway, and here's the final scores. New Zealand, the holders, nine points. Desperately disappointing. Australia, hardly much better, 14. Americans, they're on 31 points in second place. They qualify, but it's England's day, 42. They qualify, and my word, didn't they qualify in style? So England safely through to take their part in the Intercontinental Final. With me, one of the heroes of the afternoon, Chris Morton of Bellevue. Chris, obviously the atmosphere here, very much to your liking. Yes, certainly. Tremendous crowd. The track's really well prepared, and um, England have a really good afternoon. What does this performance do for England's morale now? Because it had taken a bit of a knock with the Test Series against the United States, didn't it? Yeah, sure. We had a, quite a bad meeting at Poole on, on Wednesday. Um, we didn't do very well, so the manage, managers were, were a bit worried about how we'd go today, but I think we've proved a point here today. I think your own performance really typified the spirit of the side. You were determined to attack from, from any position, really. Yes, certainly. Um, I came here today not really knowing what to expect, but willing to give everything I had, and, and it, it was enough, you know. Well, I'm glad it's all turned right at uh, Kings League. Chris Morton, many congratulations. Many congratulations also to England as they start their celebrations. We say goodbye from Kings Lynn.